Guess what, people? Got another tent. Let's see what it weighs. So, 2.8 kilos. It's a two person tent. I'll tell you a bit more about it in a minute. It does look quite bulky just now, but that's because I've already had it out and I haven't scrunched up the bag. Thank you everybody for watching the channel again. Let me explain my thinking behind this. I've got two tents. Uh, they're both a solo Vaudi and a two person North Face tent. Perfect for what I need, but for my wife and I, I look for a spacious tent. I'm not particularly concerned about the weight or the bulk really, because we don't tend to walk too far. But just looking for something reliable and spacious. I had my mind on an Abisco Light 2 from Fjallraven, but I was kind of loath to spend that money. And I wondered if there's maybe something out there that might be very close, but a lot cheaper. I really wanted to spend under £200, so I narrowed it down to two, uh, both in the sale to some extent as well. So they can sometimes be a bit more expensive. But uh, one of them was an Alpkit Viso 2 tunnel tent, and this one was the other one I was thinking about. So, without further ado, the tent in question is the Vaudi Arco 2P. So let's get the thing outside, get it pitched, and get a look and see if I've made the right decision. And although initially it looked pretty bulky, or it might do to you, I've actually opened it, as I said, had the thing out. There's a lot of air in here, so actually, it does go a lot smaller to a kind of typical two-person size. I was also looking for something near or as close to as big as the MSR Tin Time 2 that I had previously because we really love the space in it. And I'm hoping this will be a reasonable compromise. Poles are colour-coded, so there's a kind of silver end to silver reflector finish here. On this one, orange to orange, so very straightforward. Hugely chunky poles, 10.3 millimetre, bigger than the Abisco light. And this is a nice feature, a captive pole end on one side and a reinforced sleeve. So very like uh, Hilleberg, I think, and a few other of the kind of Nordic makes. On this side, just a conventional eyelet, no problem. And then you can tension it once it's up, I guess. couple of prop vents at the back which are offset so you don't have the cold air going straight through the cabin the inner if you know what I mean they're actually offset in the style of the Mac pack minaret two on the back here and as luck would have it it's just starting to rain so that was good timing just cinch up the tension on these tension that down a bit that's better right peg it out now Eight of them, but they don't have any pullers on them to get them easily out with your fingers. Um, so I'll either modify them or swap them out and use the pegs from one of my other tents. Really nice, big thick webbing. Everything is quite well built by the look of it. I haven't put the guy lines on yet, they don't come pre-attached. Though the inner is, which is quite good. Four guy lines is standard, with our Vaudi style runners, which are a bit unusual and quite large in my experience. One big mistake by Vaudi, well I say mistake, that's all the pegs used. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll still get four guy lines to go on and there are no pegs supplied. Okay, let's put these on now. Right, I found four spare pegs, which you'll need to allow for. So just looking at the rear end here, I suppose you could tie another tail guy out here for a wee bit of additional support. Though it does, to be fair to it, feel pretty solid. Especially with those 10 plus mil poles. You've also got two attachment loops here, which I guess you could run another guy line out of the vent at the front. But actually looking at this in detail, I would be a bit reticent about doing it. And the reason being is that stitching is not in any way reinforced to take a lot of stress. So yeah, I think these are almost kind of obsolete. It does, however, have a bigger one at the top, which I'm probably more inclined to use. So it's forecast to rain on off quite heavily today. I'll just leave this up and we'll use that as a wee rain test. But the seams are all taped. I'm not expecting any disasters. The fabric itself, this polyester, looks to be exactly the same as the MSR Tin Dime. Both in weight and feel, I think. So it does have an extra loop on the bottom there to attach the guy. 
as opposed to a uh, buckle to stop zip creep. A couple of Velcro tabs on the way up. And the door, I believe, goes all the way around underneath the vent. Just try that. Ah, yeah, okay. Got plenty of room there to uh, gain access. I think the door is over 80 mil wide, and it certainly looks it. And then there's a tie back here with a typical generic fitting that you get in a lot of tents. And the door doesn't fall down into the ground, which is good. Zips in a U-shape, exactly the same kind of tyre for the interior as there was on the fly sheet door. Head height, sufficient. It's a relatively low profile tent. I believe this is 90. I'll give you some of the dimensions and we'll compare it with the Abisco Light 2 which to me is the is the really the one I was thinking of originally. So the compromise with the shape of this is the slightly lower head height, but again, very similar to the Briscoe Light 2. And the fact that it tapers towards the back where you are, so there's a slight drop in height. It also comes with a drying line, which is good, already installed, so that's quite nice. Again, a bit like the MSR tin time. The two vents at the back, you cannot seal them, I'll show you. Unlike the Abisco 2, which I think tapers from the front to the back directly, this one stays square, so you keep the 130 width to that seam point there. So where most of your body is, you've got the extra width. So these remain sort of mesh. The rest of it is solid polyester inner. So I reckon it's a fairly warm tent. It should do us fine in some fairly drafty three-season weather without any major drafts coming in, I hope. You can also close the outer vents, which is good. So that'll make it just a bit more flexible and a bit warmer if we need it. It has two pockets only, one at the front and left, and just one of them in A here on the right hand side to correspond. Okay, so you get two thirds solid polyester and a third no seal mesh at the top. This is not sealable, so just trying to think of a comparison. My Vango Xenon UL2 you can choose to completely seal this or just reopen this vent. So again, it's a biased a bit more towards three seasons. In terms of fit and finish, I would say it's kind of mid-market. It's all well and robustly made, um, but there's just the odd loose threads here and there just where it's not finished. Well, it is finished, but they just don't tidy them up. Odd loose thread attached to the inner here and there. But uh, yeah, I don't see any actual issues with the construction. Looks fine. The ground sheet is quite a nice compromise between hydrostatic head and lightness. And one of the main reasons I chose this over the Alpkit Viso, which was the other one, or Viso. The Alpkit was 129.99, I think, in the sale. This was 148. I got this at. So, you know, compared to, I don't know what the, uh, I'll put the price on screen at the moment for the Abisco Light 2, but yeah, huge saving over that. Yes, it's not absolute top drawer construction. Yes, it's a bit heavier. But actually with those very thick poles on it, a nice low wind cheating shape and a kind of reliable design, I think it should suit us really well. The other reason is that this is 130 centimetres wide apparently. I really want that because it's much more comfortable for us to sleep without banging into each other. Uh, the Viso I think is 127 which is my kind of limit. So I kind of st I stopped on the buy button just when I realised it was a wee bit narrower. One tape seam running across the ground sheet. You've probably got about well four to five inches depth all the way around. Good thing is the fly sheet comes really close to the ground, so again it'll seal well. So you're unlikely to kind of get splash back. It's more likely just spin drift snow if you tend to extend your camping into the snow season. Uh, some extra hanging loops, so you could run like a second line al along the side of the tent on either side and hang gloves, socks, etc., and anything else you need to dry out. And uh, you'll just use this as your hanging line for your lantern or the wee loop at the top there. As luck would have it, that's the rain back on, but just to show you the vestibule, yeah, very, very spacious. Great for two, easily two packs, cooking gear and all your junk lying about. And a really nice, generous hood above the door. So again, allows you just to sit the stove down below here and any rain will either run off to the sides or if it does drip in, should avoid hitting your stove. Also good to see the zip is two way, so you can vent from the top either just when you're sleeping or when you're cooking. Uh, yeah, look at it, it's a reliable design. There's so many different designs about that are very similar to this. They all work, I think, really well, as long as you can keep the wind 
mostly end on. Not so good if it starts to tack during the night. But I do love a tunnel. I think it's a good combination of, of weight and size. That's two Neo Air, an Xtherm and an NXT. Regular size, mummy shaped and virtually up to the door at this end. There's about a foot or so of space to store some more clothing down at the bottom. So for tall users, not a problem. I think it's 230 long. Again, if you refer to the diagrams for the compared to the Abisco, you'll see if they're the same or which is longer. But yeah, you can see the width though. This is what I really like. I know I keep going on about this, but 130 centimeters wide is really my personal minimum dimension for the two of us to be very comfortable. Sitting on the Thermarest, five foot eight. Uh, yeah, as I go back from the door, it's just starting to touch about a foot back from here. But by the door, yeah, no problems for cooking, getting changed, plenty of elbow room. This is not a sponsored video in any way, I spent my own money on this. I would have liked to buy an Abisco Light too, but I just couldn't justify that kind of budget for all the time that we use it. Yeah, I think this will work very well, there's not an awful lot on the internet about it. But I think this ticks most of the dimensional boxes. Strength, with these big chunky poles, that's good. So and wind stability, it does taper at the back, so tail into wind, it should be good. Tons of vestibule space. Uh, yeah, what's not to like so far? But we'll get this out this weekend. I'll try it either solo or the two of us if the weather's not too bad. And I'll do a wee follow up video and let you know how we got on in practical terms. But it does remind me of the MSR Tin Time in many ways. It also reminds me of my Van Gogh Zen and UL2. I would have bought the UL2 over this. I think if your budget extends to about £250, buy the Zen on UL2 because you'll save 800 grams and you'll have more head height all the way back. But I think other than that, very, very similar in terms of internal space. And if you've got the money, why not go for the Abisco Light too? At the end of the day, you're going to save about 800 grams in weight. It will be stronger. It's better fabric that will last longer over the term. Uh, it's still nylon, so there'll be a bit of stretch in it, whereas this is polyester. But thank you for watching. Um, I hope you found it of interest. Any questions, just drop me a line below. But I'll do a wee follow-up, as I say. I'll let you know how we get on. But yeah, ticks the boxes for us. And uh, a really cheap alternative. Got it on absolute snow. And I think it's still on there at 148 at the moment. So, see you soon.